All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another relationship video. This is something really important that I want to talk about to you guys uh, that uh, I believe hits a lot of us when we go through a breakup in any kind of committed relationship, um, marriage, whatever. So it, it is pretty important. And let's say that you're dating a guy that you're, you know, you're dating a guy or you're dating a woman. And there's really strong feelings, or there has been really strong feelings and commitment between you two. You've been dating for an extended period of time. This is more than, you know, the second date, obviously. Uh, and you guys are seriously committed and involved. So there's strong feelings. There's love there. And something happens. Maybe it's fights. Maybe it's uh, infidelity. Maybe it's uh, distress. Uh, whatever it might be, right? Maybe it's the whole classic, hey... Uh, you know, I love you, but I'm not in love with you conversation. Maybe it's, uh, you know, this is me. It's not you. Don't worry. I just need time. Whatever this, you know, however these words are said, uh, it pretty much all means the same thing. So you're the person that is getting broken up with, right? You're the person that your girlfriend or your boyfriend is basically saying to you, hey, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. I can't do this anymore. There's, we're fighting too much. We're growing apart, whatever it is. And they tell you that they still care about you and maybe they love you, but they can't continue the relationship, right? And so one thing they say when this happens is they'll say something along the lines of, um, let, me, let me change my color here. Okay. Okay. Let me get back here. I'm not used to this drawing tablet I got, right? So what they'll say to you though is something along the lines of this. Man, it's hard to write with this thing. I'm not so used. I bought this drawing tablet because I thought it would be easier than my mouse, but I want to still be friends, right? They're like, I think. They might say something about, you know, I think we're going to make better friends than we do lovers. I, I still care about you, so I still want to be a part of your life. I want to know that you're okay. I want to be able to be here for you. Whatever it is that they say, they tell you that they still want to be friends, right? And that certainly sounds good, especially if, you know, your feelings really are deep for this person, especially if, you know, you really care deeply about them. You know that they want out. You know they want out of the relationship. And any time, guys and gals, any time somebody wants out of the relationship, despite all the pretty words that they tell you to, you know, make it sound better, <clears throat> when they um, when they tell you that they can't do this anymore, they they want to break up. They think that it's going to be healthy to break up. Whatever. Um. Hey, this is me. It's not you. Uh, hey, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Hey, I, I just need time to think about this. I, I, I uh, want to make sure this is the right thing for us. I need to focus on my work. I need to focus on this or that. It doesn't matter what they tell you. The bottom line is they've come to a point with things that have happened in your relationship where they see either themselves being happier with somebody else or perhaps they see themselves being happier alone without you. The bottom line, both of those scenarios, they see themselves needing out of the relationship with you to be happier, okay? So they basically, a lot of times they see themselves as a higher value than you. They see themselves being wor more wor you know, worthy of more than what you can provide in whatever way it is that, you know, that they're looking to be, to be happy. Okay, so it it sounds nice because maybe, the, you know, I'm sure they do love you, especially if they was, you know, in a relationship with you for some amount of time. Uh, I'm sure they have deep feelings for you, you know, as well. And it's going to be hard for them to break up with you. But ultimately, they are wanting out of the relationship. Ultimately, they are going to breathe a sigh of relief when, you know, you're done moping and crying. And hopefully you don't mope and cry and beg and play too much. And you let, you know, you respect their decision to be done, right? But still, you have, you're left with this, this question here. Well, 
I want to still be in. I still want to be their friend. I want to. I want to know that they're okay. I want to be able to talk to them. I want to be able to share things with them. And if something happens, you know, if I have a bad day, I want to be able to talk to this person. I, you know, I, I want to still, you know, maybe invite them over for cards, you know, once a week, or you know, I want to invite them over for holiday. You know, I want to invite them over for Thanksgiving dinner because it's just going to be me. I'm going to be cooking for just me or me and my kids or whatever. And you want to be able to, you know, have barbecues with them whatever else and be a friend sounds nice okay but here's the thing guys and gals if you really really love this person if your feelings are super deep for this person and you know um if there's a lot of uh affection for this person a lot of care then this is the last thing you want to do is to allow them to be your friend all right now there is so let, let's go ahead and take this guys and let's say this comes up and you're at the end of your relationship right and you two are going to be splitting up right well one of these paths here would be okay to still be friends and we'll talk about that in just a moment right but here's the thing guys if if you decide to be friends with this person so basically let's just go ahead and put right here this is going to be the in love path, right? So you're taking the in love path here on still being friends with this person that that is breaking up with you. Remember, they're breaking up with you, and they're basically saying, hey, they're giving you an option. They're feeling like, hey, you know, we can still be friends, and it's really tempting because all you want more than likely is them to be back as your partner. You want more than friendship. You want to be the one that they love you want to be the one that they choose to love you you want to work this out whatever the problems are uh, that has caused them to come to the decision to break up with you and that they still want to be your friend you're like okay well you're not breaking up with me completely you don't hate me you still want to be friends and i guarantee you that people are thinking well what i can do is i can elate this level of friendship right I can elate this up by being their friend and being able to be there for them and can have them confide in me and, and talk to me and all that. And it's really tempting because you think if I'm their friend, they're going to be in my life. They're going to be, you know, there. I can call them. We can text each other. We can email each other. We can play games together. We can do the barbecues together, whatever it might be. And by being in their life, you're going to go back up to the relationship pretty easily, maybe even pretty quickly. And you're thinking, if we're not friends, I'm probably never going to talk to them. How are we ever going to go back to what I want? I want them in my life. I want them as a partner. I want to love them. I want to be loved by this person. And so it's really tempting to say, yes, let's, uh, let's be friends. But we're still in love with them. So we have to take this path, right, for I want to be friends. So there's several problems that come with this, guys. This person has chosen, they've made a decision that they don't want to do the partnership anymore. They don't want to do the commitment to you anymore. So they're also not going to want to do the whole I love you thing. You know, uh, they're probably not going to want to call you baby and sweetheart and all that stuff like that. They're probably going to call you by your first name. Uh, so if they've been calling you, you know, uh, you know, Angela all this time or whatever, you know, if they've been calling you baby and sweetheart and, and honey and all this stuff all this time, now it's going to be back to your first name. Hey, Angela. Hey, Rico. Hey, Eric. Hey, Robert. Hey, Stacy. You know, it's not going to be that sweetheart stuff anymore because remember, you're friends now. You're not, you're not, you're not lovers anymore. That's the way you're going. And so it's really likely that if you're still in love with this person, right, hearing them call you and act like you're a friend is more than likely going to lead to hurt. Because every time when you're used to them calling you baby, for example, hey, sweetheart, hey, baby, hey, honey pie, whatever they called you, and now all of a sudden they're calling you by your first name, like a friend. That's very likely going to hurt. You're going to have to think about this stuff and say, hey, I'm getting hurt by them calling me by just my name rather than, you know, all the, the baby type names, the, you know, hey, baby, what's up, sexy, whatever it was, right? So that's hurt, right? And then you keep going down this path of friendship. You're going to get hurt every time they say that, which could be, you know, anytime you guys get together, anytime you guys chat or talk on the phone or whatever it might be, Right. So then you come potentially to the next thing that you're used to, and that's going to be affection, right? So you don't typically give friends hugs, 
like warm cozy hugs like what you're looking for uh you're typically not going to be given friends you know intimacy and if you're used to that friends don't you know unless you're going friends with benefits or something like that and that's still going to be unhealthy because friends with benefits with someone you care that much for is still going to lead to even more hurt for you because remember you're still in love with this person and so when there is no more affection right when the affection is gone you're going to be like ouch why can't you hold my hand you're going to reach for their hand they're not they're going to pull their hand away because they just want to be friends so you're going to go to hold their hand you're going to go to hug them you're going to go to do all these different things and this is going to lead to more hurt you're going to feel the same rejection remember they're splitting up with you right they're breaking up with you they are not wanting to be in a partnership anymore so every time they don't call you the names they used to always call you maybe in the same tone they used to say them it's going to be hurt anytime you want to give them a hug or cuddle with them or hold their hand or run your hands through their hair uh, or anything like that and they don't you know reciprocate what you're wanting it's not only going to be hard for you it's going to be a lot of hurt but it's going to give them pressure as well because you're going to probably make them feel guilty maybe they're going to feel bad that they can't make you happy they're probably going to see the hurt in your eyes and your actions and it's going to be really awkward and it's going to hurt them as well because you know if they still care about you they're not going to want to hurt you every time this stuff comes up right so i think you guys can kind of see where i'm going with this right but because they broke up with you and they're still friends ultimately as well somewhere down the line you're going to be inviting them to a barbecue or you know whatever it might be if it's an online relationship maybe you get in some kind of an online game and you're just saying hey we're going to play you know one of our favorite online games or we're going to invite them over for cards or whatever um, you're going to invite them over to play Pictionary or Scategories or some board game or D&D, &D, whatever it might be, right? And you're thinking, hey, this is my, my old sweetheart. We're still friends. They still care about me. And then your sweetheart is going to come in that front door, come into that game or whatever you're doing, right? And this is your old sweetheart, let's say, right? And all of a sudden, you're going to see that hand holding you, you was hoping for that you got hurt by up here. Yup, you know it, right? We got a dude here in a ball cap right and they're going to be holding hands with this dude and they're going to be all over this dude and they're going to be like well and you're going to be like what maybe you're going to say something maybe you even cause a scene or maybe you get to with them behind their back and say why did you bring that person over with you i thought i, I didn't invite them and you might even make a scene it's going to be really hard because again seeing this in any way is going to lead to much more hurt and pain Right. When we talk about hurt and pain, we're talking about potential tears. Your, you know, your heart is going to be breaking as you see this, especially if you see the affection that they're given to this other person, this new person. You're going to be thinking to yourself, like, well, wait a minute, I was in your life for however long, you know, year, two years, five years, whatever it's been, and now you just go out and pick up this random Joe Blow or this random Nancy, and you're giving them all kinds of affection. But what about us? You know, what about why can't I get, why do you pull away when I try to hold your hand? And they, maybe you don't express these things to your, to your ex, but these are going to be thoughts that are going to be going through, you know, your head and your heart as you see this. And this is just a few example, guys, of this is what I'm talking about. This is going to just lead to more hurt. And when you break up, when you have a breakup like this, what you want to do, the goal here, guys, in a breakup, right? is I know a lot of you are saying is to get them back, right? Well, if this, all this is happening, especially if you're, you know, you're crying and, and boo-hooing and stuff like that and begging and pleading your ex and everything like that with all, every time you get hurt, you're just going to drive them further and further away. It's going to be awkward for them as well because, again, they're not going to enjoy hurting you or seeing you hurt uh, unless they're evil, and I'm sure they're not an evil person. Your goal here, guys, when somebody breaks up with you is to heal, right? You both need to heal and get over the pain, whatever pain caused this part, you know, your ex to want to break up with you. And when you're broken up with, you definitely need to heal and get over that pain. So none of these things that are gonna, likely going to happen when you say, oh, yeah, let's be friends. Uh, none of these things that are likely going to happen are going to give you the right atmosphere, the time, and everything else you need to properly heal when all this is going on. And this is why... If you are in love with your ex, if you still have deep feelings for him, you need to think about all this and just say, 
no. And we're going to talk about that as well and how you say no uh, to, hey, I still want to be friends. Obviously, you're, you know, you care about your ex. You, you want to do this in a positive way, right? But you don't want to, um, you don't want to do it with anger or, uh, you know, sarcasm or anything that's going to sound vindictive or uh, evil or put them off in any way. You would definitely want to do it in a positive light when you tell them no. And I'll give you a couple of examples of how you do that because you don't want to go down this. This is a really dark path, guys. And this is definitely not going to help you heal. Because remember, the goal here is to heal after a relationship and be able to move on. Okay. So obviously you're going to need to be friends at some point. This is all assuming that you don't have any kids together, that this isn't a marriage or whatever. Um, and if you are married and you do have kids and they want to break up with you, then you're probably going to have to, you, to some degree, you may not have, you know, you're going to want to try to be friends for your kids' sake, especially if you have kids together. So that's why it's so difficult when you have kids or you're married uh, to go down this path because you're likely to go through a lot of hurt uh, with that. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot harder. It's going to take a lot longer to heal when you're having to, to go through all this stuff that, you know you're wanting especially you've been married for a long time you've been sleeping in the same room hopefully uh you probably had a lot of intimacy you probably had a lot of great moments a lot of great memories maybe vacations uh and you have kids together if you have kids together you have kids that you know are part of both of you that love both of you and it's going to be it just it's such a that's why you, you really got to pick the right one guys you really got to make sure that you're you're marrying and, and dating the right person for you and that you're not out there just having you know, sex with uh, anybody that, you know, you have initial uh, chemistry with or whatever, because it's going to make a really dark, hard breakup, especially if you're married or, or have and or have kids with them. Right. But if this is assuming that, you know, you're in a relationship and you don't have kids together and you're not married or anything like that. And even if you are married and you don't have any kids, you're still going to want to just say no. Now, if you're married or let's say you're married or have kids with this person, and they want to break up with you. You're still going to want to try to go down this path where you have as little interaction as possible. Uh, you may not want to invite them over for every barbecue or every game event or all the things that you want to do. You're still going to want to try to stay as much on this path as you can, just so you don't avoid, so you can avoid all this hurt. And you're really just going to want to do things that together, like take care of the kids, take care of, you know, uh, visitation, uh, visit the kids separately and stuff like that. So you're not together. So you don't see all these things that are going to affect you and hurt you and hurt your ex as well, right? Now there is a path you can take here where if they say, hey, I wanna be friends, this is gonna be a path where you are not in love, right? And this is, probably isn't the same thing they're saying, like I'm in love with you, but I'm not, you know, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Even for them, this that probably won't fly. What I'm talking about here, guys, by not being in love, because even though you're, what I'm saying here is even though your ex is saying, hey, I love you, but I'm not in love with you, chances are, you know, for them, if they see you with another person, dating another person, holding another person, happy with another person, it's very likely still going to hurt them. That's what I'm saying when they say stuff like, hey, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. It's just, it's hot air, guys. Um, so, you know, don't take them for every word they say when they break up with you. Uh, during a breakup, remember that you really got to, Put a lot of salt you know in the words that they're giving you because a lot of it's just stuff to try to soften the blow if you would right make it not hurt as bad and i can tell you you know firsthand that hearing that i love you but i'm not in love with you can hurt enough as it is but then you realize that they're just you know they're just saying something to make it they're saying a cliche uh because it's easier uh when you realize that hey they're breaking up with me they probably do still love me quite a bit and they're going to be hurt by some of these things that go on uh, should we take a path of trying to be friends, right? But let's say they break up with you and let's say you dated for a year, right? And they break up with you and you say no to them, right? But then six months later, a year later, maybe five years later, or whatever, you run into each other at the supermarket, you run into each other wherever, you know, or you end up, maybe they end up uh, contacting you or whatnot, but you're both at a point where neither one of you are in love with each other anymore. You want each other to be happy. You're at a place where seeing them with somebody else is not gonna bother you at all. Seeing them, you're not gonna, if you're not in love, you're not gonna wanna be holding their hands. 
Uh, you're not going to be even be want them to be saying sweetheart and baby and honey pie and all this stuff like that, right? Because that'll be awkward because you're not in love anymore. But if you're wanting that and you're still wanting the relationship, then all this stuff is going to hurt. So both of you have to be in a place uh, where you know you're not really in love with each other. Uh, you you care about each other. You want to be friends. You can have fun together, and nothing's really going to affect you. You know you want their happiness. Then at that point, yeah, you can be friends. You can say, hell yes, let's be friends. Let's have fun, you know, um, because you don't have all these expectations. So most times when people break up with you, this is not going to be the path that you're at. You're going to be in love. They're going to be in love. You're going to have a lot of love feelings, uh, you know, and uh, trying to be friends is going to lead you down a, a path that you don't want to go down if you're really trying to heal and uh, get over them, okay? So I know it's really, really tempting, like I said, to say, yeah, if we're friends, we're going to be in communication a lot more. Uh, probably not. You're probably, they're probably going to be avoiding you for the most part. So you're probably, if, like if you're texting a lot, uh, you know, after you break up, they're saying, hey, I still want to be friends. But then you're going to text them and they may not respond for days where it used to be minutes or hours. Now it's going to be days or even weeks before they respond, right? So this is what I'm talking about. That's going to be probably more hurtful to you as well. Um, and then it's going to lead to more bickering and fighting and, and everything like that, right? So I, I understand how it sounds good. Hey, I, if I'm just friends with them, we're getting, we can be in contact more. We can do things together. And maybe they'll, you know, want to be back a partner again because I'm in their life, right? But the thing is, guys, and even if you're talking about a situation where you really want your ex back, Saying no is going to be your best path, right? Because there's a very true statement, guys. When, when somebody wants something really valuable, you know, if, if somebody's looking for gems that are really valuable, uh, you know, they could go out and they could buy these really amazing little things that are made in China, right? Called cubic zirconia, right? But these things are mass produced, right? There's piles and mounds and, and everything like that of these cubic zirconia. And we have just piles and mountains of cubic zirconia because they're made by machines and factories in China uh, and stuff like that all over the world. And they're cheap, right? But when we talk about rare, what we talk about is your perfect diamond, right? And this thing is like glittering. This is real. This is a real diamond. And the price tag on this thing is way more expensive right so that perfect diamond especially the right cut clarity color all that stuff i think it's the four c's this diamond right here is rare and this is what you want to become if you want the best chance at getting your the person that's breaking up with you back is you want to just say no and basically become rare in their life not become as cubic zirconia. They don't want you anymore. They're already saying they want to be break up with you. So you really want to be a cubic zirconia in their life and be there all the time, be there maybe every day, talk, try to talk to them every day. They don't want junk. Why would they ever want to get back with what they see as junk, right? They already tell, want to break up and they're seeing you as no value or little value, right? So let's say this has little value. They're already breaking up with you because you're not high enough value for whatever the reason, whether it be fighting or whether you cheated on them, uh, whether, you know, you've let yourself really go. I would hope somebody doesn't, you know, really, I hope that your partner uh, doesn't, you know, isn't that shallow, uh, you know, unless it's just something major. But for whatever reason, you are little value to them or no value. And now you want to be in their life all the time and be friends and make yourself even more no value, right? Not only that, you're, what you, they see you all the time, and when you do this, they can't miss you, right? So if they never get a chance to miss you because you're there all the time, and you're trying to text them all the time, and you're trying to call them all the time, and stuff like that, they're probably just going to pull further and further away, and pretty soon they won't even want to be friends. They'll be like, you know what? And they're just going to stop contacting you, and it's just going to lead to more hurt, right? So by saying no to friends, what you're going to do is you're going to be gone right you're going to go take care of yourself you're going to move and do the things that you need to do uh you know your purpose your drive your mission your priorities in life uh whatever it might be maybe losing weight uh maybe 
you know, maybe they're, like I said, there's maybe you've always wanted to uh, see the Swiss Alps or uh, go on a, maybe you've never been on the ocean. Oh, you want to take a boat ride on the ocean, whatever it is that you really want to do, get on with the things that you want to do, the things that you need to do in your life and become that diamond. Because then once you're gone, right? Absence makes the heart grow fonder is a very good, you know, quote here. So they're going to have a lot of good memories before they came to the decision that they wanted to split up. And they're probably going to forget a lot of the stuff that maybe caused them to want to do that breakup. A lot of the stark stuff, maybe the arguing, whatever it might be. They're probably going to forget about a lot of that. And they're going to remember all those amazing little moments that made them love you in the first place. Maybe when you first met. And they're going to start, these things are going to start coming back to their memory. And, uh, you know, it may, may be a week. It might be uh, a month. It might be six months. It might be six years. We just never know how long it's going to take. Uh, and but and this is going to give you your best path to maybe get them get what you actually want back out of your ex. Uh, should you still want that when they come back into your life? Right. But if you really want your ex as a partner again, you have to just say no to them wanting to be friends and become a rare gem or become something that's missing in their life so that they can actually miss you. With you become this and you just say no, now you've got a real chance for them actually missing you once you're gone. Right? You need to make sure you're gone. So I, hopefully I'm making some sense to you guys if what you're really wanting is this ex to partner with you again and avoid the temptation to still be friends after right after the breakup, right? Because this is what you want to do. Now let's go ahead and talk about, guys, how you just say no. So obviously when you just say no, there's probably already been arguing and fussing and begging and pleading and everything like that when they broke up with you. So when they told you, hey, I just want to be friends, whether it was you know yesterday, last week, or a month ago, or whatever, and maybe you already said, hey, yeah, we could be friends, you need to come back and you need to say, I appreciate that you still want to be friends. Uh, I appreciate that you want to keep me in your life because I was you know, that important to you. But you're going to want to say something like, I appreciate, you know, I, sorry, guys, I can't really write, but that's appreciate that you still want to be friends, right? Still want to be friends. But this I cannot accept. Let them know in nice words what a value they are. You are the most beautiful queen. Um, you are the, per the person that I fell in love with. You know, just be really nice and have a good tone to it. You're the person that I fell in love with and I can't just go back. I can't go from being in love with you to being nobody or just friends like that. And I think that for me to heal, remind them that I think for both of us to heal properly with this decision that you made, um, that I think we need to not be friends. And we're also remind them to tell them that, you know, you respect their decision. And the best way to respect their decision is by just saying no. So be really nice, you know, make sure this is really positive. No more blame game here, no more arguing, no more pointing the fingers, nothing like that. When you tell them that you can't accept friendship. And then what you really need to do after that is you need to make sure that after you tell them that, that you actually do stay gone, right? You become that diamond, that rare, that rare gem that they don't see anymore. And that is going to give them the chance to, um, oops, man, that's going to give them the chance to really miss you. And that is what you want. You know, that's ultimately what we want. But more importantly than that, guys, I know that having them get back in your life, I know this is what everybody's probably wanting here uh, that might be watching this video. But the more important thing here, guys, whether they come back or they not, remember this is going to give you that best chance of that. The most important thing here, guys, is that we're healing, right? The goal is to heal and get over this breakup and avoiding all this hurt and pain and awkward situations and everything that's going to be here. The best way to avoid all that hurt and pain and awkwardness and the inability to heal is by just saying no, right? So I hope this helps you guys out. I hope this makes you guys understand why you can't just be friends with somebody that's just broken your heart. If you still have a lot of feelings for this person, you pretty much, for your own health, for your own safety, not safety, but your own well-being, 
uh, for your own mental health as well as emotional health, uh, your ability to heal and you know look at yourself and make yourself better. When they break up with you and say, I still want to be friends, uh, it may hurt them. It probably will hurt them when you say no. But you have to do this, guys. You have to just say no for yourself, for your own. And if you're, gonna, if you're thinking about them as well, if you care about them, then you also just want to say no as well because all this stuff here is going to hurt them as well. It's going to hurt them to hurt you constantly. It's going to make them feel guilty. And it's not going to allow either one of you to heal. Remember, though, if you guys uh, are at a point where you're not in love anymore and none of the stuff that I already talked about is going to hurt either one of you, then by all means, yes, be friends. I think you're probably, you know, in that situation, you're probably going to find out that you, you, you have great uh, the ability to be great friends because you probably know each other really well from your past before that breakup happened. You guys are going to know a lot of stuff about each other, you know, during that journey you guys had. And then at that point, yes, you can be friends, but you have to get past being in love here all right so be sure you comment down below let me know what you guys think about uh the situation that i think comes up a lot uh make sure you're taking the healthy path guys make sure you're becoming that diamond and you're becoming completely gone from your ex when they break up with you but they still want to be friends i'd love to know what you guys have to say down in the comments below be sure you like my video guys be sure you're subscribed if you're not already subscribed to my channel where I try to help you guys out with these dilemmas, these situations in your relationships out there. Take care, everybody. Stay safe. And remember, with time, with getting on your purpose and doing the things that you need to do, you will be a better person, better off one way or another, as long as you take these steps to move on in your life, as long as you take time to heal, and as long as you focus on yourself, whether you get your ex back or not uh, is really irrelevant right now. We are focusing on you. We're focusing on your health and not being hurt. This has been Zach Surround tonight. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.